Solar panels in Florida. Is it really worth it? What if I have a Tesla? Is that going to save me more money if I go solar? What will my home insurance cost when I put solar on my roof? And you might have gotten a solar salesperson knock on your door and make you think, maybe I should go solar to save money. Today in studio, I have a special guest who actually put solar on their roof, and they're going to share with us the numbers that they obtained for cost as well as profits at the end. We're going to try to run through a bunch of different scenarios. For example, VJ scenario where you own a Tesla Model 3, right, VJ? Correct. And by the way, we realize we can't cover every single scenario so if there's a specific one that you're thinking about be sure and comment below and also if it's your first time here and you're just learning about real estate in orlando consider subscribing to this channel so you can learn more about orlando real estate thank you for joining me today my neighbor vj's in the house today and i'm i've been trying to get him into this chair for months now vj Tell us a little bit more about your solar setup. It is a Tesla system. When it comes to the sales rep coming to the house, we have had at least 25 different sales rep who came to the house. And when it comes to numbers, I look at the price per watt. That's your bottom line. That's how you compare oranges to oranges. VG's not wrong. I think in the past week, I've had three different people knock on my door saying they're selling solar. So I decided to take somebody up on it. So later in this video, we're gonna compare VJ's numbers to the quote I obtained for this house to see if it makes sense to go solar with their company. And Tesla had the lowest price per watt. And so you probably said, if I do this, it's gonna save me money. Pretty much. But prior to that, you gotta work the numbers with the financing, right? On their website, they give you the option to pay cash or to do financing. Financing was pretty good. I wanna say 2.99%. Given that mortgage rates are five and 6% these days, that's a good number. Tesla, all they wanted to, is running my credit. Right, and I understand that's kind of like an unsecured loan, right? Yes. However, anyone purchasing your home would have to assume that debt or you'd have to pay it off. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about future home value. Okay, VJ, and before we go through your numbers, tell us what happened next as far as the install. How does that work? The installers came one morning. They were pretty good. They, they went on the roof, they started installing. They came back the second day, they installed. And a few days after Tesla asked me for my insurance. How much money had you paid out at this point? Like a deposit? $250. Now, our, it's either $100 or $250 is all they wanted. That's it? That's all they wanted. Wow. And you got people going up on your roof and screwing holes in and putting panels on it. Oh, yes. Amazing. Now, the insurance, uh, we'll get into more of that in just a little bit. But basically, you had to call your insurance company and make sure you had the proper liability coverage, right? I didn't. I have Geico, Umbrella Policy, and Geico. I just went online, printed out, sent it to them, and it was accepted. What Vijay's alluding to is something that's very important for you to understand. Here in the state of Florida, when you have solar panels installed on your shingle or tile roof, certain insurance carriers will drop you from coverage. So it's important to look around and see what your cost would be if you had panels on that roof. Now, VJ, I know with these sales rep, these solar sales reps, they're having to think about the financing, which you talked about, and then the cost of the installers. So one of the things I like about Tesla is they do not subcontract. The guy climbing on the roof, I asked him personally, and he's like, Elon is my boss. He's the one who writes my check. The cost for installation of solar might it be Tesla or anyone else is very, very high. 40 to 50% of the total cost is just install cost. How much they charge you to put four guys on the roof for two days. It worked out to about $17,000. Okay, so VJ, you're kind of a, a pro and a con person. I've seen some of your posts in the Facebook group and all that, and you actually sent me your numbers. So if you don't mind, sure. we can just go through the calculations and you can kind of explain how the system is working and the cost. Sure. Okay, VJ. so we've got your Excel spreadsheet pulled up and we're gonna go through some of the numbers of your system right now. Sure, the total cost is $33,000 and change. The APR is just about 3%. Tesla wants 10% down payment after install, which is what I like about them. So that is out of pocket is uh, that $3,000 and change. Mm -hmm. So now you got this unsecured loan of 30 grand over what, 10 years, 20 years? 10 years. 10 years was my only option with them. Some people can go to certain banks and get 30 years. Mm -hmm. I like a 10 years because I... I'm confident the panel's gonna last 10 years. I'm not too confident that panel is gonna last 30 years. Of course, and then your roof might be 15 years old, there we go. 10 years from now, and you might have to change it out. Now, system size, this is important. Is 14.2 kilowatts, is that a good size system, a medium size system? 14.2 kilowatt system in Laureate Park Lake Nona, that's a good system. It's a very small system for my household. Our usage has been about triple of what the neighbors are. Well, I, I feel like I'm entering that category a little bit now that I have uh, four children and we have just installed a swimming pool. So I'm seeing that electric bill rise and rise and rise. And that's another thing that's making me think, 
maybe I should get solar. So I'm excited for you to see my numbers in just a moment and see what you think about those. Before children, maybe you should get a new hobby. <laughs> He's right. All right, back to your numbers here. Then we have the breakdown of the cost. And like you were saying earlier, look at the installation cost. So what's this monthly finance charge? That's that 10 year loan. Exactly. That's how much Tesla wants every month uh, for financing this loan with them. And at that nice low APR rate, I mean, I wish my mortgage customers now, instead of getting five and a half percent, could get the 2.99. That'd be great. That's a great rate given the market mm -hmm. right now. That's less than inflation. So that $32 is what I got after I divided up that down payment I made, $3,000 and change, divide that up by 120 mm -hmm. months. That's how much it works out to roughly per month. So if I were to factor those two together, I'm looking at 284 per month. Okay, and now you go over here and you compare it to starting with the cost per watt. The total cost per watt for your system was $2.36. Correct, and cost per watt is what you should be looking for. The cost per watt is what gives you something to compare with. So mm -hmm. I am a two point, what is that, 2.36? 2.36. It's a pretty good number compared to what, what I've seen. I've had salespeople in Laureate Park sell me prices above $5 a watt. They're trying to convince me by telling me who on the block paid that much already uh-huh uh it's a good deal that guy paid and like poor guy uh, i mean yeah i think in any neighborhood especially if it's a up-and-coming neighborhood or high price point you're gonna have certain vendors they're gonna come in and try to take advantage that being said it looks like vj did pretty well because we looked up a statistic and it's about two dollars and 57 cents per watt is the average current cash price for a system of solar in Florida. And what, what was the performance like? Seven to two kilowatt produced per day on average, uh, which works out to uh, 2,178 kilowatts per month. That's the total amount of power my panel would produce in a whole, in an entire month. Then we look at how much it would cost. Uh, OUC sells for roughly 11 cents altogether. And so now you're saying, if I were to purchase 2,178 kilowatts from OUC for the whole month, it would be $239. That's exactly it. And as you can see, looking at the cost of paying the loan down that we saw over here, or a bit of a loss at the moment. A bit of a loss. Partially because VJ's doing only a 10-year amortization on his loan rather than stretching it out over 20 years. Do you charge a Tesla during that time? I do charge my Tesla, but that wouldn't make a difference if I were to charge it with OUC power or the panel power. Mm -hmm. the, the cost would be the same. One thing I did not factor in there is the government rebate, which is, I believe, 26%, unless it changed to 30% with that bill that passed recently. Mm -hmm. So there's about $8,000 you can credit you can get back from the government by installing the solar. The year after you install the system and you do your federal income taxes, you can get this government tax credit, correct? Correct. And a responsible person would take this 26%, as we can see here on your system, would be approximately $8,700 and put it on the loan, right? So they'd pay down the loan balance, but a lot of people don't. Yes, and I wouldn't. I mean, that's 3%. I can use that money for real estate. <laughs> exactly, uh, which brings me to my next point. When the solar salespeople say, this is gonna increase the value of your home by at least $33,000, right? Because that was the cost of the system. Well, we as brokers and realtors in Central Florida, we bring buyers around to these various homes. And if I see there's solar panels on the roof, the first thing I'm gonna do is find out, is that system paid off or not? And if it's not, I'm gonna ask if they use the government tax credit to pay down the debt. Because if they didn't and they took that money and bought something else, maybe another car or who knows what, and they're trying to stick us with this debt, that's not gonna fly. And the way we're gonna negotiate that is to ask the seller to take the proceeds from the sale with the purchase price and pay off that debt. So just remember that not everybody's gonna value the fact that you put solar on your roof, whether it's paid off or not. Okay, I want you to see what my quote was and get your reaction. So this is pretty exciting. So a couple weeks back, these nice solar salespeople came to my door. Instead of shooing them away, I said, come on in and sit in the chair and let's, let's hear what you would quote my house at. So I actually had a solar salesperson sitting in that same chair that VJ's in today, and they produced this amazing report. Here it is. This is a pretty cool presentation. I liked how they did this. They first took the design of my home. This is the home that we are sitting in right now in the studio. And he was able to place the panels on the rear of the home, the front of the home, this section of the home, but this ended up being the most efficient way for this system to be designed. Now, the size of the system. Initially, they started with a little bit more conservative size to keep the cost down. But then I said, I'm gonna add a pool pump and, and I've got all these children in the home, so I wanna get the biggest system I can for the maximum return. So they pumped it up to 18.48 kilowatts which is slightly bigger than the system that you have. Yes. 
And the reason I don't have a bigger system is I don't have enough of a roof. Mm -hmm. That's all I can fit on my roof. Correct. Yeah, these homes in Laurier Park, some of them are, are quite skinny and the roof lines can, can be prohibitive for getting lots of panels on there. Basically, they're estimating that the yearly production would be around 25,000 kilowatt hours. One requirement of this solar presentation, by the way, was they wanted to see my OUC electric bill. They wanted to see the graph of the bill and see how we used our energy currently, which if you think about it, it gives them ammunition to provide the right type of presentation to sell you on because they're going to show you, here's how you use your energy in these months. And we're going to design a system that can either meet or beat that. So here on this graph, they took that energy consumption that our family utilized. And you can see in August and September, it was at its highest because of the ACs running all the time. And they said, this is what our solar production is going to attempt to achieve. The solar offset is something that you need to have an offset higher than 100%, especially if you're going to have all these Teslas you're adding to the property, the pool pump. So they didn't just get it to 100%. They tried to exceed the energy production versus what we needed. Our current utility bill at the time was 254. This past month with the new pool pump installed, I think it was like $600. Whew. Yes, that's my typical bill, uh, right? About five fifty, six hundred dollars $600 every month. And while I was living in New York, it was 11 to $1,200 because electricity in Long Island is twice as much. Right, and here we have these newer homes that have dual pane windows, better insulation, but some of my customers with single pane window homes of 5,000 square feet in Windermere older homes, could, could easily be 1200 a month as well. Now, this is where some of the confusion comes into play with many people looking at these solar systems. They get the whole kilowatt hour thing and what they need and what the, what the price of the system is, but you're gonna have cash price and finance price. Did that happen to you as well, BJ? With some of the salespeople, yes. They were talking about different prices. They would tell you things like, we're gonna give you 1%. Anyone who's gonna give you 1% has something funky going on there. They tend to tack on some kind of fees in the back. Exactly. So right now, this large system, they're saying cash price 55,000. And two, they're already trying to dangle this in front of you saying, you're gonna get a tax credit of $14,000. So your net system cost is only 41,000. They're not letting you think about the fact, what if I moved in five years? And what if I have to change my roof out? And what if my home insurance doubled? They're not really letting you think about that. If I'm right, the average American moves every seven years. Is that right? It used to be about five to seven years or seven to 10 years. Okay. Then we had the hysteria of COVID and people relocating around. But we have a joke about the forever home. I'm in my third forever home. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yeah. The, the forever five year or seven year home. Right. Yep. All right. And here's that keep up with the Joneses mentality. You know, more solar is being installed. You got to jump on and your neighbor did it. And one of the biggest things that they said was the cost of utilities is going to go up by your electric company by 100% in the next 10 years. Well, we looked up that stat. What do you think it is, VJ? I know exactly. It's 1.9% for the past 20 years because I've looked up that stats over and over too. Uh, he's, he's right. Between 2012 and 2022, the electricity costs experienced an average inflation rate of 2.29% per year, meaning the 100% the gain and how you better have solar because electricity is too expensive. It's just not true. Uh, it's not true yet. Given this inflation we've seen recently, maybe it's going to be a lot higher. But overall, it's it's not 100%. It's somewhere about 2%. That's where it's been floating. Maybe it gets a 3. Yeah. It's not going to go to 100 like the salespeople could try to tell you. We're going to go through some complex scenarios because we got some really cool comments for people that have multiple Teslas and batteries and this and that. We're going to go through some of those so that you don't just comment below right now and say, you forgot to account for my Tesla. Okay, back to this system. Now, when you look at these numbers, VJ, and, and you know your numbers, what do you think about this pitch? Obviously, it's a little bit bigger system than yours. They're giving a cash price. I'll go into the financing in just a second, but it's a $55,000 cost to get an 18 kilowatt system. What is the price per watt? Tell me the price per watt. So we just did some simple math here and it looks like the cost is 2.99. Per watt. The cost per watt you're getting is 2.99. Is that before tax tax rebate or after? That was before. But then you have finance charges if you want to finance Well, that it. was the cash price. The kicker here is the financing price was like 75 or 80 grand. Right. So that's going to drive it up even further. Can we do that, Matt? The 80, whatever that number is, divided by the watt? So if we just took $80,000 as a total system cost, when you take that $80,000 and divide by the kilowatt size, you get a cost cost per watt of 4.33 dollars per watt it's kind of like the efficiency rating right yes but i'm comparing me financing it through tesla versus you financing it through that company mm -hmm. and my cost is almost half as much which kind of tells you the root of the problem here these are all over the place it depends on the financier the installer you got to really know your numbers and break it down and separate it cash price versus finance 
the system size, the efficiency of it. There's so many things that go into the calculation before you pull the trigger. So you're going to get the best deal. If you're planning on taking a huge loan out on a solar system and then listing your home right away, I would really caution you to do so unless you plan on paying off that loan with the proceeds of the sale of the property. So here in Lake Nona, we have some awesome neighbors commenting, posting about their experiences with lots of different vendors and solar is definitely one of those. So VJ was a great person to put this data in front of his neighbors and we got some great comments. These are very insightful comments about how the system could be compared. One of those I found interesting was from Joe. She says, now I want you to offset the cost of solar versus your Tesla recharge, or if you had two of them and not just the cost versus gas, but if you had batteries as well. So what do you think about that? All right. So whether I'm charging the Tesla with OUC with the electric company or I'm charging it with from solar, it doesn't make a difference that I have a Tesla. I'll be paying either way. So we shouldn't even be looking at that. When it comes to battery, my question is why? What do you need a battery for? Are you worried about hurricane? I've been living in Lake Nona for six years, Laureate Park specifically for six years. We had a hurricane. The most power we ever lost was about 40 minutes and it was a dry afternoon with nothing going on. I do have a gas generator. Those are efficient. Those cost 700 bucks at Sam's Club. They can run on propane. One tank of propane is going to last me a day. And this brings me to my point. When people think of solar and their Tesla car and they want to have that Tesla power wall on the wall, they think they need that. They think that's part of the system, right? Where it collects the energy and stores in the battery. That way you can have power all night long and never have to use anything from the grid. And when you think about the cost of these batteries in the $8,000 range, right? And the lifespan of the batteries where you're going to have to replace them and pay again, how much are they really being used? I can tell you for sure for the last five years, you would have used your battery for one hour. And like Vijay said, I think the, the last one we sat through in a different house was Hurricane Irma circa 2019. And I never lose power the entire time. Many of our power lines are buried in these newer sections of these neighborhoods. And before you start commenting how you want to go off grid and have batteries and not even be connected, here in city of Orlando limits, that's illegal. Correct. You have to be connected to the grid in the city of Orlando. Perhaps in the more remote areas, you can do it, um, mm -hmm. but not the city of Orlando. To get, I believe, the CO for the house, you have to be connected to the electric grid. All right. Well, thanks again for joining us, VJ. Really appreciate that little... Yeah, give them the, the shout out. And if you found this video helpful, be sure and subscribe and give us a like so more people can find out about Orlando real estate and specifically technology, all things real estate that we're doing here in Lake Nona, Orlando, Florida. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next studio episode. Bye.